Yo, what's up, ladies and Gs? Much love to those returning, and shout out for those turning in for the first time. Uh, it's 2019. Happy New Year to everyone out there that's turning in right now, and I'm definitely excited about today's show because we have a very special guest with us today as we kick things off for the new year. I mean, he is a super producer, recording artist, audio engineer, who has worked with some of the top music recording artists, including Future, T-Pain, Bobby Brown, Kanye West, Tanaje, Black, and countless others across various genres. And as he continues to build his reputation as one of the most prominent producers in the game, as we speak, he is definitely no stranger to hard work, and it is no coincidence that he is currently on a road to fame. I have Grammy-nominated and Billboard Top 10 producer, the legend himself, King James Worthy. What's up, Where man? How you feeling, man? I'm <laughs> awesome, man. Blessings. Definitely, definitely. I'm definitely excited, man, to have you on the show. Uh, I know we've been in contact for the past week, week and a half here, trying to set something up. Uh, we definitely appreciate you for coming on. Uh, how's everything going, man? Where you at right now? What's going on in your life? Man, just working, working crazy, man. Uh, getting ready to put out my debut EP, which is called Blue Leisure. Nice. Uh, that's dropping uh, January 11th. So really, really excited about that. Uh, getting ready to go on tour, uh, still also writing and producing other artists. So just work it, man. Nice. The grind, man. That's what we all about. Leveling up. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So usually what I like to do for my guests who comes on is really just, you know, open up the floor a little bit and allow you, you know, to share your insights and stories uh, as far as those who may not know of you, um, but are definitely excited to hear more about your backstory. Um, if you don't mind, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started in the music industry and that whole spill. For sure. Um, so if you guys don't know who I am, I'm James Worthy. Uh, I'm a record producer. I'm a songwriter, recording artist and actor as well. And um, I'm from Queens, New York. Um, I currently live in Atlanta right now, but, uh, you know, I'm from up top, man. So <laughs> got that uh, just that cultural music influence, you know, from all genres and all sides of music. So mm -hmm. that's where I come from. Uh, you know, I come from the tribe called Quest era and, and and the Q-Tip era and, and Quincy Jones yeah. and, and that type of that type of music, man. So that just always inspired me, man. And I just wanted to make sure that whatever I did musically, it really resonated for what I'm trying to do for myself, but also too with the listeners because I'm a real musician. So I love all types of music. So I always wanted to pour that in my own. Mm, absolutely. Definitely, definitely. Now, what age did you actually start to develop this talent that you have uh, did you start off, you know, at a young kid as a two, three, four, you know, messing with the keyboards, banging on stuff, pots and pans? Or, you know, uh, did you teach yourself, you know, the idea of what, you know, music is in your perspective or what you taught, you know, have a mentor? Like, how, how did you get into the music industry? Well, I knew that I wanted to do music probably roughly around the age of about eight. OK. But I more so got into it professionally around 14, 15. Mm -hmm. Um, so by that time, um, I remember my first, uh, production software was reason, our uh, program called reason. Mm -hmm. And with reason, um, you know, if anybody knows about that, it's really technical. So it's more so, you know, for the techie heads, yeah. if you're using, uh, what they call hardware, um, just, you know, any type of, you know, stuff, stuff you got to plug in or you mm -hmm. got to what they call the you got to snake it and route it. Oh, yeah. That type of hardware type of stuff. That's in reason. So it's like a, a software based version of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started using that and YouTube was my best friend at the time. So <laughs> I learned all that stuff from YouTube, of how to use reason and, and just kept going and going from there. But even past that, mm -hmm. I just started really focusing on how to actually make a beat and how to actually make sure that my sounds sounded right mm -hmm. and what VSTs were and what effects were and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. once I really started honing in on that and perfecting that, then production got stronger, it got bigger, and eventually I started really placing records. Nice, nice. Now, at that early age, you were said around 14, right, when you really started to dive into it. Uh, did you know that you, at that point in time that you wanted to be you know, a producer, be in the music industry, or did it just you know, somewhat pop up out the blue uh, you know, as far as your experience go? Well, probably around age nine, I knew that I wanted to be in the music industry, mm. but I didn't know exactly yet what I wanted to do. So when I came to around 14, mm -hmm. that's when I knew that I wanted to make music. Okay. Um, you know, because it was just more of a big inspiration for me at the time. Yeah. You know, I was around a lot of different 
types of music, different uh, musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my dad played instruments as well. So that just really inspired me. And I was like, you know what? Let me just try to, to see what I can do on my own. And yeah. I just stuck with it. Nice. And what instruments did uh, you, you and your dad play growing up? Well, my dad was more of like a percussion kind of guy. So, okay. you know, a lot of drums, a lot of snares, you know, just that type of stuff. Okay. Uh, with me, it was more sort of the same, but I also picked up a love for piano, mm. uh, a love for, you know, bass guitar, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like those who know how to play the piano, man, you can definitely, like, get women easily. <laughs> I feel like yeah. that's just like an automatic, like, yo, just lay up on the piano, right, like in the movies, and you just start playing it just like an automatic way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it touches the soul real quick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Now, what what genres are you into most right now within your industry? Like, is it just, you know, maybe hip hop, R&B, or is it a mix, or what are you into? Um, well, uh, at my core, I'm specifically R&B. Okay. Um, that's, that's just my, my, my soul right there. But, um, you know, I'm a big, of course, I'm a huge hip hop fan. Of course, R&B, I love pop music. I love house music. I love dance music. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, jazz, yeah. classical music, whatever. I love all genres. It just depends on what my mood is. Gotcha. You know, if I'm, if I'm feeling in an R&B mood, then you know, might catch me uh, <laughs> listening to some Drew Hill. Oh, yeah. If I feel like I'm in a hip hop mode. I'm listening to Tribe. I'm listening to uh, Naughty by Nature or something, you know? Yeah. It just depends. Got you, got you. Now, you know, it's a thing going on right now. It's like a little battle. I think Jacquees is like, you know, king of R&B. I mean, what she what she gonna do about that? Is that like a battle right there? Or are you just staying out of that that mix? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm staying out of that, man. You, you know, yeah. I, for me, I always tell people, man, uh -huh. all attention isn't good attention. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I I get where he's trying to go with it, but you know, that's he's way too early mm -hmm. in his career to say that. Mm -hmm. Um. So, you know, you just you just got to keep building, man. And, and when your time comes, it comes. Absolutely. Definitely. You know, they always got this saying, no matter where you are, uh, you've got the back of the line when it's your time. You know, got to move you to exactly. the front. <laughs> exactly. That's a fact. That's a fact. Now, uh, you know, for those tuning in and really want to know exactly, you know, your your aha moment. Like when that when you cross that threshold, actually making it into the industry. Like what was the biggest breakthrough moment when you began to carve your name into the game? That's a tricky one because it was a time where it was almost like a domino effect. Like it was so many things happening at one time. Yeah. Like I remember I was placing records like five at a time at one point. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, they all came out at the same time. It, they all had like a boom. Mm -hmm. So it was I always have that, that weird answer to where I really don't know what, what the, the breakthrough was because it all happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. But at that time, um, you know, I had a chance to work with Justin Bieber had a chance to work with at the time young bird was hot um, nice I had a chance to work with uh tiana taylor um just a just a bunch of artists who um were just hot at the time and, mm -hmm. and they had big projects uh mm -hmm. which i was fortunate to be a part of man and you know it just really really uh made me have eyes on me as one of the the go-to people so to speak gotcha gotcha and that's big man you're working with big names like that especially you know getting started within the industry i know you was like man i, I made it <laughs> yeah like one of the moments like yeah here we go now you know when it comes to working with you know celebrities and top recording artists of that nature like what is it like to really work with those big names where was it you know interesting fun was it challenging you know what what was the process like well for me it's Every experience is different. Yeah. So when I'm working with certain artists, you know, sometimes the vibes are different, you know, different personalities, mm -hmm. different ways of working, different vibes, yeah. you know, just all of that. So whenever I have a session with somebody, I try to make sure that, of course, the music fits with them. But mm -hmm. we even before putting something out or working together, I try to have more of a friendship first mm -hmm. or or just a great relationship, working relationship to where we're both comfortable with each other. We're both comfortable working together. And, you know, it's just smooth. Right. You know, I, I love to have smooth 
sessions with with artists you know it shouldn't be uncomfortable it shouldn't be oh well I don't like this guy he, you know he did this mm -hmm. you know I, I just don't feel the vibe right you know like right. you never want to have that feeling when you're working with somebody and I try not to have that at all exactly I, I, I respect that and I think that goes for everything like let's let's all be cordial right <laughs> let's, all, let's all get along let's all you know learn from one another because we all bring something to the table and see how we can make something great you know for the world especially within that space Definitely. Definitely. And I definitely agree with that. Now, you know, transition, I just want to switch it up here a bit because I know you work with a lot of artists like Bobby Brown, you know, Sinatra Black, you know, all these big names uh, in the industry. Like, you know, was there any challenges that you faced, you know, during the time as you're stepping into, you know, your, your career, like into the industry? And how have you able to overcome them, if any? Have rose. Yeah, um, I had a, a big frustration in the beginning of my career with people, of course, the the, the normal thing of people not believing in you, not believing in your craft, not believing that you can actually make an impact in the industry, you know, all those, all those little things that add up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I fell victim to that because, you know, for one, you always want people to support what you're doing, mm -hmm. but also too, it's another thing of people understanding your vision, understanding what you're trying to convey and bring to the industry. So, for me, I was never one to follow the trends and try to be the popular one all the time and be in front of the camera mm -hmm. all the time. I've never been that person, which ironically, the cameras always follow me or <laughs> the, the, the popularity, so to speak, always follow me. For some reason, I'm attached to different people and like, oh, let's see what James <laughs> is doing. Oh, let's, yeah, <laughs> let's check him out. You know, he's doing this, he's doing that mm -hmm. in, in a good way. Right. Um, so I never really tried to seek that. It just came to me. But, you know, again, sometimes when you're not doing the popular thing or if you're not following the trends and people love to backlash it mm. and saying, oh, he's not hot because he's not doing this. He's not doing that. So for me, my music has always stood out and it's always um, had its own lane and identity because I didn't follow the trend. Mm. You know what I mean? So now uh, as the years went on, I think people really realize that. And now more than ever, um, people want my blueprint. Mm, absolutely. Definitely. I mean, you, you said in the, you said in the path where a lot of people can definitely uh, learn from for sure, especially those up and coming, you know, producer or artists who are looking to carve their name in the game as well. And, uh, you know, just your track history, your record uh, speaks for itself, you know, and I definitely commend you for all your hard work, man. I've been checking out some of your, uh, your songs. I've been playing them, you know, putting them on my IG, getting people hit to it. And uh, I love what you got going on. I appreciate definitely, that. Definitely. And, and speaking of, you know, music overall, you know, as far as your album goes and, and your singles that you have out, uh, it was one called Moves that I was able to really, like, resonate with that you put out. I yeah. definitely love that. I, mean, I just had to take a moment right there. I'm going to take away from the audience. <laughs> take away from, <laughs> I like that. It, it got a dope vibe. It feel like I'm, like, in a Caribbean or somewhere. Like, I got to, you know, be dancing with a drink. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, that was one of my, um, I would say, breakthrough moments as an artist already. Mm. Um, you know, that song is really special to me. And uh, it's more special to me because I had the pleasure of um, collaborating with Ecstasy from Houdini. Mm the legendary Houdini. And if, if anybody knows, who yeah. is, you know, please come out at night, friends, <laughs> the classics, you know? Yeah. So um, that was just a big aha moment. Nice. Nice. Now I know you got a, a new uh, EP coming out, a new album, Blue Legion. Now what, what inspired you to name it Blue Legion? Cause yeah. I've been trying to figure it out <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for a second. I'm like, what is it? It's like, what, what's the mix? Maybe you can help me out with it. Of course, you know, since you came up with it, like, what, what's the meaning behind it? So the meaning behind it is um, it's just an expression of feeling free, feeling um, at one in peace with yourself. And, you know, the meaning of the word leisure is, uh, like I said, feeling peace, feeling at one, but also it's a relaxation word. And it's also, it's just something mm -hmm. to feel like you're in tune with yourself um, and that's what I wanted to convey with this project is just that mm -hmm. I believed in myself that much that I can make a project of this stature. Um, it's a project that mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't realize or really believe that I can make. And blue is a tranquil color. So with me, my favorite color is blue. And I believe that blue is more so a powerful color. Yeah. Of, it's It's like a... 
it's like a mood color. So whenever you think of blue, you're thinking about tranquility, mm-hmm. relaxation. You're thinking about positive energy. So I put the two together and called it Blue Leisure because that's the mood of this project. It's it's relaxing. It's dark, but it's sensual, but it's also melodic. Mm. So you're getting all of those different types of feel in one. I'd be like on the ocean there, like on a boat. Or like I gotta be by water. That's yeah, exactly. you got to listen to this for sure. Definitely, definitely. So like, what what can we expect? Oh uh, man, you you can expect just great R and B, but a f- infusion of different genres in it um you know you got some some of course some r&b you got some soul in there you got some jazz in there you got some hip-hop you got some um you got a little bit yeah. of <laughs> i would say caribbean vibe in there just a tiny bit but um <clears throat> just just a mixture of just great vibes you know that you can just sit down and just listen mm-hmm. all the way through it's one of those projects where you can listen from top to bottom and it's a story at the end of the day. It's a theme project, it's yeah. a storyline. And once you hear it, you'll understand how nice. Tony Terry on the project, which uh, Tony Terry's R&B legend. Mm. Um, we have, of course, Ecstasy Houdini on there. We have Kalina from Dirty Money. Now, are, are there going to be any videos, like any trailers, any sequences, you know, uh, related to the album coming out? Yes, we, uh, we are uh, going to be releasing some music videos really soon. Actually, uh, mm-hmm. when the project releases officially, uh, probably the next week, uh, we're going to be releasing mm-hmm. a video to one of the songs project mm-hmm. called Love and High Levels. So make sure you look out for that. Dope visual. Um, it's just more so um, more of a concept visual than anything. So not too many cameos, not too many other people in there. It's just more so a lot of B-roll, a lot of performance shots, a lot of imagery in there. Dope, man. I'm definitely excited. I know a lot of people, you know, tuning in, whether they heard of you or not, they're definitely excited. Uh, just based off the energy that you're giving it. Blue Leisure, guys, definitely go check it out when it drops this upcoming Friday, man, on the on 11th, man. That's a good number, too. That's one of my favorite numbers. Go get so it. Go check get it out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I'm definitely excited, man, to hear you know more about your backstory and especially you know how you got into the realm of just music overall like um you know what what what's some advice honestly let's flip it let's flip it for a second like what's some advice or actionable steps you would give to someone who is trying to you know get into the music industry and carve their name into the game man the biggest thing i would say is for one you just got to believe in yourself number one but number two you got to make sure that you know who you want to be in this business because you got so many people who want to do the same things that you do. Um, you got so many people who want to be an artist, who wants to be a producer, who wants to be a writer, engineer, whatever it is. There's there's like a plethora of people that want to do it, but you got to understand first who you are as a person and the entity that you want to be in the business and what's going to make mm-hmm. you stand out, what's going to bring you value, and what is your value mm-hmm. uh, you're bringing to the table. Uh, but yeah. lastly, too, you just got to believe in your craft. You got to believe that you know, you're as good as these big stars or if not better. You know what I mean? You got to have that confidence that, you know, you have something that nobody else can bring. Absolutely. And uh, we got some people that's really trying to, you know, get their foot into the door when it comes to the music industry and learn, you know, some tips and tricks on how to actually stand out from the competition. Now, is there anything as far as any tools they can use, any methods or ways to get in contact with people like you? Like, what are three things people need to know to help set them apart from the competition? I would say networking. Mm -hmm. Networking is very important. People don't shed light on Mm -hmm. that as much, but networking with the right people. Now, that's the difference between networking with people that can't do much for you Mm -hmm. versus networking with the right people that actually have resources. So that's Mm -hmm. number one. Number two, having great product. You got to have product that is going to resonate with your audience but you have to understand who your audience is that's the most important so if you don't know who is listening to you or who you're trying to connect with then you're just hitting a brick wall you don't know who you're talking to or who you're conveying your music to so that's number two and number three you just have to make sure that you're at the right places you know, sometimes you just got to step out in faith and, yeah. hey, if you're in Atlanta, you may have to go to L.A. and and network there and meet people there and, and, and just show that 
that drive and that passion to whoever it is that you think can give you an opportunity. Because if nobody knows how passionate right. you are about Absolutely. yourself <laughs> and what you do, who's going to know? You know, in your personal opinion, like, how would you define, you know, success in your eyes? Defining success. Yeah. Um, that's a hard but easy question. And I say that because success is, is based off of what you make it. So anyone else that tells you um, how successful you should be or you are is their opinion or whatever that may be considered success to somebody or success may be just doing what you love to do and actually making a profit from it that may be considered a success or you taking care of your family and your friends you know all of that is considered success you know what I mean but at the end of the day mm -hmm. um, it depends on what it means to you it, it depends on how happy it makes you feel how happy it is to actually do what you set out to do in life. A tug of war type of question too. And I love asking it because you get, you know, different responses. So full circle, uh, like I said, I can't keep you long, uh, but we would love, man, to have you back on the show, you know, once it drops and get everything rolling uh, to, you know, share the, the reaction to the, to the people, you know, what they actually thought of it. So uh, you know, with that being said, is there anything else, you know, that we can expect? Uh, right now, the biggest thing is Blue Leisure. Make sure everybody go get that. Um, also too, if you are in Atlanta, Georgia, we will be having an official Blue Leisure EP release party at iLounge on January 12th uh, from 7 to 10 p.m. So if you're in the area, please come through, show some love. You'll get a chance to hear the, the project in full if you haven't heard it the day before. And, um, yeah, we're just going to have a good time. Yeah. We got some special guests coming out. I'm going to kick it with you, man. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much, <laughs> Come man, through, man. Come through. through. Little Daily Podcast. We really appreciate it here and taking the time out of your day to do so. No, no problem. Pressure. Thank Maybe, you for having me. You know, and, uh, you know, what's the best way to contact you? For those that want to reach out, pick your brain a little bit when it comes to the industry. What's your handles? Definitely. Uh, you can follow me on social media at King James Worthy. That's on all social media platforms. I really, again, I want to say thank you so much, Mr. Worthy, for coming on, sharing your insight. Guys, go get Blue Leisure. It's about to drop, man. It's one of the hottest albums. I already know it. I can feel it. Uh, it's going to be a wave, man. So go check it out, man. Much love to you. And again, Jay, thanks, man, for coming. Oh, yeah. The show. So until next time, guys, much love, peace, and blessings. Thank you so much. Yo, what's going on, guys? Tuning back into the podcast. I hope you all enjoyed that segment just as much as I enjoyed creating it. I mean, we had a special guest come on today and share some valuable knowledge when it comes to the music industry. And I mean, Mr. Worthy is definitely a guy who is worthy of high praise, man, working with top recording artists such as, again, Future, T.I., uh, Bobby Brown, Tanaje, Black, you know, and the list goes on and on. And uh, just for him to take time out of his day to share that insight and knowledge on how he made it into the industry, shared his backstory, the challenges that he faced, his new EP that he has dropping again January 11th this upcoming week and also how to win and succeed as an upcoming artist, producer, audio engineer uh, within the industry. So I hope those tuning in who are looking to get involved in that space definitely take advantage of what he has to offer. I mean, you can reach out to him uh, again through the DM or any other social media platform. You can find him on as far as King James Worthy. Uh, again, I'll have all his information down below in the description. So feel free to reach out to him. Just mention, hey, I found you from the Love Love Daily Podcast uh, and I guarantee you he's more than willing to, to work with you guys. So uh, with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed it. And if so, uh, definitely uh, take time out if you can to go to iTunes and subscribe and make sure you leave a rating and review uh, about the episode. You know, let's, let's, let's go about the episode and, uh, you know, tell us your thoughts, what you thought about it, what you enjoyed, what you didn't like. I mean, you can rate it one star, two star, three, four, five, whatever the case may be. Just, just rate, just leave a review. Let me know what you guys thought. Uh, because it honestly really goes a long way when it comes to getting these type of guests onto the show uh, to bring that insightful value to you all so we all can level up here on the podcast. So again, uh, definitely go check that out. Do that for us so we can go ahead and uh, get to the next level, guys. But with that being said, I do want to let you all know that uh, we have some cool partnerships coming up. Um, I know it is around the time of tax season. It's tax season time, right? 
and I know a lot of people are worried about taxes because of the Trump situation or they haven't filed before or they're thinking about filing they got business taxes 1099 stuff of that nature now if you don't have a tax home right if you don't have a tax home or you don't know who to turn to I have a company that I'm partnered with called tax team services now this is the number one trusted tax team and accounting firm in northern Michigan area that is actually taking in new clientele as we speak uh, they're very trustworthy they've been accredited with experience over 25 plus years very knowledgeable when it comes to the game uh, you can definitely reach out to them for sure i have the information down below as well uh, you can reach to them uh, through instagram at tax team services or if you want to call them simply give them a call they work from around the world which is the coolest part like no matter where you are they can help you file so if you want to take advantage of that definitely reach out to them you can call them at 313 528 uh, again that's 313 uh, I just mentioned you know level of daily podcast they're gonna hook you up I mean come on I'm the plug come on I got you guys so uh, if you're looking for help on that end they got you recovered um, I know a lot of people worry about receiving a tax refund you don't have to worry about that a lot of people don't know is that you can actually still receive your refund with the refund advance and they're actually doing an advance at that tax team place of up to six thousand dollars so definitely take advantage of that tune in check it out and again information will be down below um, I do want to mention that we have some cool stuff coming out here pretty soon clothing is definitely pushing out pretty fast here level of daily clothing a lot of you uh, have been asking about I've been ordering it I see a couple orders recently I definitely appreciate the love and support uh, you can find that at uh, the link down below as well I think I'm gonna just put all the links down below and make it easier so you guys can choose from I uh, know where to go so um, I'm gonna end it right there. I'm not gonna say any more because I feel like you know these outros be a little ridiculous, and I feel like I've been talking for about seven minutes. But uh, with that being said, I love all of you, man, and uh, I can't wait to continue to bring much more success here on the podcast and special guests for you all, so you can connect and actually get the information that you need to get to where you want to be. So until next time, much love, peace, and blessings.